Recently updated with some safety and tech that we've been asking for since day one, the 2021 Alfa Romeo Giulia aims to make an attractive thing even better. And for our special preview launch drive, we get to take a quick look at the middle of the range Veloce. Here it is. Starting with the Sport, the recently revised Giulia range comprises Veloce as tested here and the range topping Quadrifoglio. Sport starts from $63,950, while the Veloce starts from $71,450 and the Quadrifoglio from $138,950, all before on-road costs. The excellent Harman Kardon audio system adds $1,255 to the asking price and in our opinion is worth the outlay. The big change for 2021 comes in the form of updates to the infotainment system. There's a new 8.8 inch touchscreen, which works neatly with both Android and Apple phones, and the rotary controller remains, should you wish to use that instead. The dual panoramic sunroof adds $2,255 to the cost, while the metallic paint adds another $1,355. We love the beautiful 19-inch alloy rims and their standard running staggered tyres front to rear, while adaptive Byzantin headlights, LED DRLs and tail lights, gloss black exterior trim and privacy glass are all also standard. The Julia cabin undoubtedly is just as beautiful as the exterior of the car. Things like the leather on top of the dash and the doors, the stitching, the little attention to detail elements inside this cabin make it a premium place to be. Love the terracotta coloured leather and I just love the ambience and the feel of the cabin. But there's a couple of really practical things as well. First of all, there's room for a proper sized bottle like that in the cup holder or bottle holder as it is. Now you might not think that's a major thing but in a lot of European cars that's not a feature. It's not something Alpha's always done well historically either so that's a good addition for the Australian market. The other one is this right here. That's a little receptacle for the key. Now I've always thought that keyless entry is a bit stupid. Not so much keyless entry but keyless ignition is a bit stupid because you end up with the key flapping all around the console or in your pocket which is sometimes uncomfortable. That's a proper receptacle for it. Put the key in there, it stays there, doesn't move anywhere. You've got wireless smartphone charging as well, updated infotainment which is something we've asked for from when the Julia first launched in Australia. Really easy to understand and well laid out controls. It's a very driver focused interior but it's a premium and comfortable one as well. We said that the Julia Veloce was a driver focused cabin and that's certainly the case when you move into the second row. While the front row is comfortable and spacious, there's not a hell of a lot of room in the second row if you do have taller occupants up front. The pleasure in any Alfa Romeo always promises to be in the driving and the Giulia Veloce doesn't disappoint. Not the most potent model grade, the 2-litre turbocharged 4-cylinder still generates an easy 206 kilowatts at 5,250 rpm and 400 newton metres at 2,250 rpm. The 4-cylinder engine is mated to an 8-speed ZF automatic and rear-wheel drive, with the 0 to 100 km an hour run taking just 5.7 seconds. Alfa Romeo claims 6.1 litres per 100 km on the combined cycle, and during our testing period, which unfortunately was largely around town due to the lockdown rules, we saw an indicated claim of 9.4 litres per 100 kilometres. Stand by for a more extensive test coming soon. The engine is punchy as well with peak torque available nice and low in the rev range and it feels fast if you do nail the throttle off the mark. It won't feel fast if you back to back it with the Quadrifoglio of course, but it's a pacey sedan for what is the middle of the Julia range. Being rear-wheel drive with an LSD, there's a sharpness and precision to the way the Giulia Veloce takes to the road when you do get into it a bit more. It feels alive, light on its feet and balanced, no matter how hard you're pushing or how bumpy the road. It's a properly sorted chassis that responds the way we'd expect a sporty sedan to without any twitchiness or fear factor. There's no doubt the Alfa Romeo Giulia has always been a beautiful sedan. Now it's also fair to say that Australians don't really look at this segment as much as they used to, but 
maybe they should. When you take a bit of a look at this car, spend some time driving it, you do start to think that maybe we should be looking at sedans like we once did. Crucially too, the tech and the safety additions have made this a better offering than it was before. As always, don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed the video. Hit subscribe so you stay up to date with all of our latest video content. And of course, the full review of the new Alfa Romeo Giulia is at drive.com.au.